For those who paint and those who wish to fully appreciate painting, there is one particular element of art which is fundamental and supremely important. Composition. Composition is one of the most valuable tools in the artist's repertoire of methods which brings order to painting. Composition can make a painting feel solid as a rock or as dynamic and volatile as an earthquake. Composition is part of the silent language of art. It's the subtext running beneath the surface which guides and controls the impact of a painting. All the great artists of history, virtually without exception, have believed in and used composition in their own way for expressive purpose. It can be overt or hidden, subtle to the point of being subliminal, or powerful and omnipresent. To understand and use composition can give a painting power and strength it wouldn't otherwise have. After inspiration and expression, composition ranks as the single most important factor in art. In today's world, there are essentially two types of composition, structural and placement. These are the tried and tested methods of composition and are the ways that most artists compose or organize their paintings. Yet in the Renaissance era, when composition in painting began, many artists organized by light and not by structure or placement. In this painting by Leonardo da Vinci, we can see that he organizes the lights in a circle. This was his way of composing the painting. And though some artists today may use this approach, the more common approaches are to organize using the structural method or the placement method. The structural method to composition, as its name applies, has to do with creating a structure. Essentially, this has to do with using the edge of the painting to complete the shapes in the painting, to organize by shape, in a sense like making a puzzle where all the pieces fit together with the perimeter of the painting completing the shapes. Structural composition includes weights and measures, or variation in size, density, and placement. Placement composition has to do with just placing things in the painting, placing shapes in the painting, and not connecting to the edge. There are essentially two ways of attending to placement composition, all over or equally spaced placement, or varied placement, or unequal or rhythmed placement of shapes. This painting has rhythmed or varied placement. This painting by Jackson Pollock has equal and all over placement. If we look at it another way, we can think of the perimeter of our painting as being four edges. These edges define the space of our painting. This space defined by the edges inherently lacks structure. It's just space. If we place a form in the area, it creates energy and direction, but not structure. It's simply a form, an energy, a direction connected to the edge. 
In terms of creating structure, it's incomplete. But when that energy is connected to another edge, it divides the space into two areas, which could be seen as separate, yet sharing the same boundary. The two areas could be divided and stand on their own as independent shapes. When we create completed forms by connecting from edge to edge, we activate the space and turn it into shapes. We turn the space into activated dovetailing shapes. Our space becomes a divided space or a completed structure. The question could be asked, why is this so important? And why is structure more valuable than space? The essential answer is that when we divide the space into shapes, we activate the space and equalize and make important every square inch of the painting. A clear example of structural composition can be seen in this painting by Winslow Homer. Notice how the figures sit in space and the horizon crosses behind, connecting edge to edge. This painting by Edgar Degas from 1888 shows a strong structural composition. A quote from Degas says, Even in front of nature, one must compose. This post-impressionist Pierre Bernard painting from 1913 exhibits another strong structural composition. There are both geometric and biomorphic forms. Bonard said, A well-composed painting is half done. The other kind of composition that can be used is placement composition. This painting by Edward Paschke was composed basically by using placement. Of course, things are not always so cut and dry. There are lots of gray areas. This painting by Thibaud has placed forms dovetailed together with background structure. It's a combination of placement and structure together. This painting by Jasper Johns describing a map of the United States has all over pattern with essentially equal energy. If you look carefully, you can see some change in the all over equalness. However, these changes are relatively minor and the painting basically expresses very dynamic and active but equal energy. It's a placement composition. This painting by Juan Miro is an example of placed rhythmic energy. But notice how he's used soft structured shapes in the background. This painting also by Miro uses placed and rhythmically spaced forms. Notice the sense of rhythm in this Henri Matisse placed and rhythmed formed painting. In this Matisse painting, the spacing is more regular, but there is still variation of spacing. Notice how the variation in line thickness and size of form adds to the subtly varied rhythm of the painting.